they literally did everything, including very caring files, including uh, uh, phoning and doing, there was no code, there was no stuff. Talk about sacrifice, patriotism, and feminist leadership. I still ask myself how they will compete. Professor Musweza at the time was still a full-time academic <laughs> advert, but doing this NHS, ISS, I don't know at what time work. These two women had a difficult task of establishing this ent entity which never existed before, developing its systems and its structures. And they were later joined by a strong team of young administrators. The hope of our nation. And all of them, all of them, we all know them. This was not an easy task. As we know, public perceptions and attitudes toward women leaders, in particular, black women leadership. You know how it is like. Worse off if you are relatively young by age, like Professor Musweza was. Let us not forget that we live in a country where sexism, Some dad. racism, and ageism threaten the very progress and development that we all aspire for. The naysayers, the detractors, the pessimists always have a lot to say, but very little to contribute or do. As we congregate here today to mark this important day in the history of the NHSS, I want to submit that the NHSS has managed to grow beyond the imagination of many. And at its first decade, the NHSS has managed to do what many could, could not achieve in centuries, mm. in decades, <laughs> or even in millennia. The NHSS is a perfect reminder that all about all, it's not all about South Africa, and Africa is done and doing. There are still pockets of excellency amongst us. Majority of our professors do not invest time in building institutions. They will tell you straight in your face that they don't care. They are pushing paper publications. They are careerists. They can prioritize, prioritize their own personal interests, research excellency at the expense of students. The duty to serve is not in their consciousness. They come into university to see what the university can do for them rather than how they can contribute in building better institutions for future generations in this country. They would rather watch our institutions collapse while they are chasing the ratings at NRF and other places. And one always asks himself, what will this accolade mean without capable and stable institutions? Because stable institutions are the backbone of every great nation. Unless we have our own people who are willing to lead ethically and decisively, we will, watch, uh, we will watch other nations thrive and prosper while we remain to be spectators in the world. And it is upon this background that I think the former CEO and her team deserve a big round of applause and a standing ovation for all of you tonight for their to a nation of winners who broke the world record in the recent World Cup a few days ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And upon entering this hall, I began to look back and imagine what the future will look like with this great mind of winners joining the ranks of intellectuals in this country.
Professor Musweza, this is a cohort that emerged out of great tribulations of the police movement, the COVID-19 pandemic that ravaged the world with its lockdown restriction and countless death. So this is a cohort of survivors and winners. This cohort had to contend with full-scale online in a twinkle of an eye while confronted by massive power cuts due to the prevailing energy crisis that we struggling with as a culture. You came out victorious. You need to just pet yourself. These challenges should have led you to drop out but for you, you enjoyed so that these great results can be achieved. Madam Pro Program Director, this is not surprising for me because they belong to a strong lineage of intellectual traditions and do not have to doubt their own capabilities. Just to mention a few of those tonight, some of you who are in the room here today, you are following in the footsteps of great leaders like Marcus Garvey, W.E.B. Du Bois, Angela Davis, yes. Nadine Godman, yes. David Alexander, mm. Ari Sitas, Patricia Hill Collins, Bell Hook, Professor Hendrick, and Professor Hendrick, uh, Franz Fanon, uh, uh, Bell Hooks, uh, Rodney Walters, Samir Amin, I can name and name and name, Ali Mazu, <coughs> Katisha uh, uh, Kosa Shangas, I, 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 I. Professor Zetin Sakata, oh, Professor Eddie Webster, oh, Professor Sarah Musweza, <laughs> Professor Manibu Kuswai, <laughs> Dr. Munisi here, Mungaji, Professor Ntanta, many of oh, oh, sure. you uh, that we were, we were able to interact with <laughs> in this space. These are great leaders that you are entering into. You are following in these great footsteps of the people that I've just mentioned. And many others that are here, I might not be able to mention them because of time. And I know your journey in each one of our 26 universities exposed to you to the greatness that resides in this country. The new cohorts of graduates and alumni gathered here tonight are the ideals and aspirations of Africa's intellectual futures. And that is exactly what separates you from other PhDs, PhD holders in the country. Those who hold PhD in physics, they have Oh, they are great, they are doing their things. <laughs> but you, we are looking at you. Because without the scientific understanding of the human and social sciences, we will be a useless generation. And we might as well close and let robots take over mm -hmm. yeah. and perish. Yeah. Our national aspirations as documented in the NDP, backed by Agenda 2063, Sustainable Development Goals 2030 tells us that South Africa aspires to achieve 70% of central uh, graduates by 2030. Tonight, as you enter this complex world of, work, uh, of, of scientists, social scientists in this country, I want you to understand that you form part of the less than 5% of clever people in this country. <laughs> yes. Indeed, you need a particular level of madness to pursue. Yes, <laughs> yes. Social science. Yes. Totally mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, only PhD can make story. you feel guilty for spending a week preparing yeah. your grandmother's funeral. Okay. <laughs> That's a pity. Because as people send you here and there, you like, that chapter. Mm. Yeah, down, I should be doing one, two, three. Mm, should you feel <laughs> guilty even to do necessary work? Yeah. Insane, isn't it? You know, Thomas
Thomas Sankara reminds us that sometimes this madness is necessary. Mm -hmm. As he says, it took the madman of yesteryears mm -hmm. to transform this world. Mm -hmm. So my, on, my own understanding of this journey that lies ahead of you is clear. Number one, you have earned the right to conceptualize, yes. to coin, to innovate, <coughs> to develop, to produce expert and in-depth knowledge that will help us understand our societies better. It is not only about these red gowns and pictures on Instagram and Facebook, but about bringing solutions to the challenges we face nationally, mm. continentally, and globally. Yeah. You now qualify as high-level thinkers yeah. and leaders of our society. A certain level of thought leadership is expected from you. Let no one use the variables such as age, race, sex to fool you. Mm. You are smart. Mm. And you will be subjected to scrutiny by your own peers, mm. of course. Mm. And it should not matter. You are an expert in your own right. You must be able to stand and defend your crowd. Yeah. Please don't surprise us by running into shoddy world of political rhetoric as <laughs> analyst on TV <laughs> and <Facebook. laughs> Just to, to appear or to show your face on TV, but don't win. Uh, or, or so that we can hear your voice on the radio. When they invite you there and you are prepared to go, ensure that you are going to provide a well thought out analysis to our people. Don't mislead our people. As you stand there, you must your PhD must distinguish you from a politician. Amen. From a journalist. Amen. Amen. And the kind of inquiry and training that you underwent must be at display there. Mm. After you have spoken, they must see that you, a PhD has, has come in now to help us explain, you know, why certain things are the way they are. Because they have actually looked at all angles mm. and cases and they've provided the public with a well thought, thought out analysis. Yeah. Just remember that we will also hold you accountable for your own doing <laughs> because you will be bringing our profession into this yeah, In fact, we expect high moral ground and integrity from you. What do I mean? We don't expect to see some marginalized community where you may be coming from or working at being misled, cheated, exploited while you are part of it mm. and you are away. Yes. That will be a grave mistake. Because our community is producing PhDs. It means that we must stand up for them and be there to provide mm. thought leadership in our communities. Yes. Some of you have the right language skills even to translate complex business and academic jargon to our communities. Use it. You are in the social sciences. Use it. Whatever we package in journals that people may not understand, use it to package to those people who may not understand in your own language. Mm. Don't say it's in, in English, I can't explain. You have, you know Skosa, you know Sutu, you know Zulu, please use it to do that. You are also expected to make a meaningful impact in our society as the PhD journey has equipped you with the necessary skills to contribute to knowledge. How are you going to help us explain why young people continue to use now Nyaupe, despite the fact that it is destructive to their bodies and minds? Help us understand why Ugutaswa is such a common phenomenon among our youth today. How are you going to help us understand why immigrants spaza are successful than local ones? How are you going to help us understand why a talented, a talented medical doctor like Nandipa can run after a criminal? Hey, and a Ooh, and after um, jolo, um, jolo. Jolo. Going to Tanzania. I tell you to why. <laughs> because tomorrow it will be Professor Paswan. Yeah. People must understand what makes this you want professor this to run after criminals. She needs wine. That is the way of social sciences. Why do we like Chinese products over our own? Red wine. 
We also want to know why it takes more than 10 years to fix a portfolio. Go to those municipalities and start interrogating them. We want to understand. Maybe there's a good reason. Maybe we are ending for nothing. So perhaps you need to start getting there and ask questions, relevant questions in those places. We are looking for answers to so many of the problems that we face as a country. As you sit here tonight looking so beautiful and educated, you need to leave this room with many questions and answers. Questions that you need to ask yourself of the world we live in, our social realities and how they can be addressed. After all, what was the purpose of pursuing this terminal degree? Yeah. If you if cannot you know. provide us with answers. Yeah. For those of us who emerged out of the margin of the so-called modern societies, a PhD is not just an intellectual pursuit, but a highly spiritual journey. Mm. While others enjoy ideational spaces for the sake of knowledge and are privileged enough to be able to locate their ontological densities and epistemologies within existing and solid social frameworks, many of us find ourselves alienated and lost, if not totally absent and dismembered, to paraphrase Uhuki Wachimungu. Even when these marginalized scholars innocently and naively follow whatever is considered as acceptable knowledge in the social sciences and humanities and begin to question them. Oftentimes they face the wrath of the system as they are seen to be challenging the conventions of Western archives mm -hmm. and established protocols, <laughs> which inadvertently form the very core of their displacement and dismemberment. The extent of the, pe of the punishment are varied they range from general rejections mm. to citational injustices, mm. from epistemic deafness to epistemic injustices. Mm. You therefore need a particular type of capital to survive this space. Mm. Some people talk of what they call navigational capital, which refers to the skills and the attitudes nurtured among the marginalized to navigate through social institutions that were not created with them in mind. Mm. Otherwise, you'll be devoured by the system. Many of you still ask yourself how you made it in the midst of the challenges we face, you face throughout your studies. In a recent article, one of our prominent African scholar, Professor Toyin Falola of the University of Texas, of Texas in the United States, put it succinctly, and I quote, for centuries, people of African descent have been put below social standards with others as many early significant individuals, including scholars, doubted their ability to reason like the rest of the world. They have been wrongly construed as people without identity, history, spirit, conscience, intelligence, or reasonableness. Africans and people of African descent had to embark on different endeavors to create reputable grounds for the misled presumptions of the African identity and blackness. This historical perspective of inferiority of the African people, especially occasioned by the long period of the slave trade, has created conscious bias against black people. There are countless occasions of embarrassment where blacks are asked for tails and thrown bananas on the street. Although black people do not have to prove anything to anyone, they have set the pace in global scholarship and development under, and underline the psychopathic instincts of a racist that has blocked all channels to reasoning mm. and to school. Mm. I am mm. deliberately reading this long quote to synthesize as African scholars, academics, and in, in, in the future of our intelligence here. The world we live in, due to its racist past slash present, will need a critically conscious scholar mm -hmm. to be able to navigate it. Let me remind you that you are therefore an embodiment of Africa's intellectual futures and ideals. 
you should therefore take seriously and embrace the contemporary narrative of change taking place on the continent. You are prospects in the midst of complexities and hopelessness. Therefore, you should be able to comprehend what South Africa, the continent, and the world expect of you after these great achievements. In the interest of time, I don't intend to reiterate some of the global measure uh, issues that confront us today, but among the, them, there are these geopolitical tensions, ecological disasters, conflicts and wars, the burden of diseases, inequalities and poverty, the threat of South to South cooperation in the West that is strengthening as well. In a nutshell, the world we live in today need leaders who are not just intellectually astute, but those who are morally, socially, and emotionally intelligent and outstanding. Yes. Thank you. I think for many of us based here in South Africa, we have watched the Magudumana case unfold right in front of us, a classic case of academic excellence without ethical leadership. And I'm sure Mary Gudumana obviously got A, A plus for her to be able to train as a doctor. She's a smart girl. She was academically strong. And we do this that we focus mainly on raising our children to excel academically. But then they don't have the heart. And the things they do, they do in the future surprise us. So don't get me wrong, we do value academic excellence mm -hmm. and appreciate that some of you managed to obtain the loudest, finished in record time, but are we the right candidates for the task of leading humanity for a common future and shared prosperity? Are we ready for the task of becoming the social and moral consciousness of our society? Our institutions are inundated with mediocrity that pass as excellence. Yeah. Our colleagues, particularly our male colleagues, <laughs> sexually harass students and colleagues with impunity and are in return protected and shielded from their misdemeanors hey. simply because they hold an A or a B rating. Hey. Hey. And they have high citation hey. indexes. They are publishing in high impact journals. Hey. Therefore, they are allowed to do as they please with mm. the students mm. because they have this academic excellence. Every time I read about a professor accused of sexual harassment, I am baffled. What kind of a social scientist fool is this one? <laughs> Who can be charged with sexual harassment when they are supposed to be the one leading society on these matters? Yeah. How can they be so stupid not to engage with the body of literature that has been published over the years around these matters? What kind of scholarly work do they engage with? So as a marginal scholar, you don't have the luxury. Don't tell me when you are studying trade uh, and international trade and you cannot uh, be uh, concerned with issues of feminism. As a marginal scholar, you don't have the luxury of being myopic and narrow because the problems are many. Yeah. They are many. You must also understand the causes of poverty, even if you are a curator in an art gallery somewhere. Yeah. You must understand what causes poverty mm -hmm. and help people to understand it. You must understand the fourth industrial revolution, even if you are a social scientist. Mm -hmm. You must understand AI, Internet of Things. <laughs> Big data. You must understand this thing, even if you are a, a social scientist. You don't have a choice. You are a marginal scholar. Your problems are many already. Yeah. <laughs> it is therefore my contention that academic excellency devoid of social and moral responsibility is a decadent endeavor. Personally, I am elated to have witnessed and been part of your growth and achievement over the years. And I know for sure that each one of you if each one of you was to be given a chance to come and speak here, this beautiful event will, 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 will turn into a pool of tears. 
tonight is about looking forward into the future. It's about being happy. You can forget everything I have said, but remember that you are part of a great nation. And in conclusion, as I conclude, great nations build cohesive societies where people from diverse backgrounds can live together harmoniously. Great nations promote equality, protect human rights, and provide opportunities for all segments of society to thrive. How then can South Africa and, and, and the rest of Africa thrive if we don't do that? Great nations prioritize education and invest in the development of their human capital. They foster a culture of innovation and provide opportunities for their citizens to acquire knowledge and skills that drive progress and economic growth. Great nations build and maintain robust infrastructure. Our government buildings are dilapidated. If we, we use it this time and then uh, 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 we, we do no longer like it, we are going to build a new one and leave that one because the painting uh, and everything else is falling. <laughs> so no amount of talk and radio interviews can fix those buildings. <laughs> they need people to maintain them. You can, you can go to TV every day trying to explain. <laughs> there is no amount of talk that can fix them. They just need hands. They need painters. They need builders. So great nations maintain robust infrastructure. They understand why we should have roads, why we should have these buildings. The neglect of understanding society and why people behave the way they do is costing us a great deal. So we need to really come back and we, we ask of you to do that for us. Great nations actively engage with international community forming diplomatic alliances, participating in global initiatives and contribute positively to global issues. We want to see you standing on global platforms. We did not educate you mm. to be part of South Africa only. Mm. We want you to export South Africa into the world. Yep. We want you to be able to host international mm -hmm. people and showcase our country. I spent time in China, and it's amazing how the Chinese speak of China. Amazing. I've never seen this here, that kind of patriotism. You know, at one stage, yeah, we were with one of our handlers there, and we wanted to go for shopping. <laughs> and when we were just about to go to the shoppings, and then uh, there were these sellers who are dodging. Come, come, let me show where something is. This young girl stood up and said, Prof, no, you guys are not going there. And I said, why? She says her bags are cheaper. Ah, uh -uh. they are fake. They are counterfeit. They are, they are costing the government. A young, young, young uh, undergraduate. Hmm? The patriotism that they have about their country. They are actually angry with Chinese who are doing counterfeit in their country. So, and one of, of, of the delegates said to me, I've never seen this kind of pattern. Pelara, now we would have run for this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We led, led the visitors into that place. So yeah. we, we really need to really ask questions of ourselves, of where we do we want this country to go, this country to go. It's us who are speaking bad of this country yeah. and thinking that we are bashing this government yeah. at the cost of the country. When you speak, we, it's good for us to criticize and, 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 and actually uh, 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 correct where things are going wrong and tell the wrongdoing. But we, it's also good to look at where are you speaking? Where are you speaking? Because that also affects our image out there. And uh, like I, I started with you saying, South Africa is a winner. We are, uh, we are people, we are winners. When you, we are out there, when you, are, when you, 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 you get out of, out the, outside the borders of these countries, you are highly respected South Africa. 
and we expect you, as you engage with the world, to keep that image. You are highly respected, not just by the continent, but the rest of the world respects you as South Africa. Everywhere, everywhere, every place where I have been, every continent I've been, I, I just noticed that there is something special about South Africa. Even regardless of our past or what, but this country is highly respected outside. But what we are doing and what this, the government is also doing is going to take this country down. So we need you to be able uh, to stand there. Creating a great nation is a complex, ongoing process that requires continuous efforts, adaptability, and involvement of all citizens. And I expect you to form part of that citizenry and be able to promote South Africa globally. Thank you very much and congratulations.